Hello everyone and welcome back to This Is Real Life. I'm your host Sherry and this is Carl. <laughs> I know you guys were having a field day with Joe and Carl running around in the last Real Life Friday video. And this morning, Carl was not leaving my side. I mean, I should have been up in here an hour ago doing this video, but I couldn't because Carl was laying on me, following me around the house everywhere I went. And so I said, all right, if I start a video, Carl, you could be on it for a minute. I mean, it's so cute. But sadly, we're not talking about Carl on this Skincare Saturday video. We're talking about something else. Sadly, I had to boot Carl out of the bathroom because he was not having it. He was done with his camera time. He said, no, nope, I'm over it. I want to go out and play with Joe. So Carl is outside. And now we can get down to the nitty gritty of what this Skincare Saturday video is going to be about. I would like to have a conversation with you guys about the content happening in the skincare beauty world over on the TikToks. Now, I myself don't have a TikTok, you know this. I'm not gonna get into the TikTok game. I mean, I've got a full-time job. Just keeping up with that in this YouTube channel and then like my daily life of cleaning the house. I've got the Instagram, the Facebooks, and this YouTube channel. I don't need to do TikTok. I don't and I never will. It's not something that interests me. And anything I see on TikTok, I get from YouTube, <laughs> to be quite honest. I feel like I know all of the TikTok drama in all of the certain genres of the TikToks. You Beauty talk, tattoo talk, the Stanley Cup talk of it all, you know, anti-aging talk, whatever it is, I get all of that content wrapped up in nice little bows on YouTube channels. So I don't know if you're anything like me, if you guys actively watch TikTok or if you get your TikTok content from YouTube like I do, some of you may or may not be aware of what is going on over on the beauty slash skincare space on TikTok. So I stumbled across a video on YouTube that really made me want to have a conversation with all of you guys because I know that on this channel, you subscribers are the best. I say it all the time. I think we all collectively decided we can see the bullshit for what the bullshit is. And let me just tell you, there is a lot of bullshit over on the TikTok side of things. I'm in the middle of doing some tests. It is morning-ish time, so I do need to wash my face and put on some moisturizing cream. But as far as like testing a product today, that's not gonna happen. We're gonna have a quick conversation about what I see happening over on TikTok and what maybe we can do about it? If there's anything we could do about it or do we just like throw our hands up and go, fuck it, the people that watch the TikToks, they should know what they're getting into. But it doesn't really seem like they do, to me at least. So yeah, that's what I wanna talk about today. So we have seen a lot in the way of very popular influencers who have skyrocketed to popularity in just a short amount of time over on the TikToks. And in that very short amount of time, I think they have let the popularity go to their head and in turn, have become a little bit more problematic in what they're pushing to their followers. I don't know, it just seems a little shady. Like, I get it, we all need to have a side hustle, especially nowadays, and believe you me, I'm like, Rant for a sponsorship. Like sponsorships are where the money is on social media. Yes, you can make some money through AdSense on YouTube, but I don't think TikTok has any sort of thing like that. And so the influencers or the content creators, they are relying on those sponsorships. And I totally get it. Make your money. Get your hustle on. 
but there has to be a point, at least I think, where is that point where you, as a content creator who has cultivated this community of people that trust you and trust what you say. Not only do they like the content that you're pushing out and they like your personality and, you know, they like whatever it is, your aura, they are also coming to you because they have established some trust with you. Now, if you're doing sponsorships, where where is that line of trust? Obviously, there is no trust if you're doing a sponsorship and you don't convey that sponsorship to your audience. Like if I, let's say, was sponsored by Epiel. I just came on here and was like, hey guys, today I am going to wash my face with the Epiel Gentle Foam Cleanser. Never mention a thing about this is sponsored, Epiel sent this to me, what have you. Never mention a thing about it. And I'm like, ooh, let's warm up the water, okay? Mm -hmm. Yes, face is wet. Oh, you can see I've already been using this Epiel cleanser for a while now. I'm almost out, but let me just tell you guys, Oh, wow. I mean, this cleanser is life changing. I mean, full face of makeup. It all comes right off. My pores feel cleaned out. Everything is fabulous. I fucking love this Epiel Gentle Foam Cleanser. Face is rinsed. Let's blot it dry. Oh my God. You guys, this Epiel Cleanser, you gotta run out and get it. Now, if I did that and I never said it was an ad and I had built this trust with you guys and now you think this couldn't have been an ad. She didn't say it was an ad. She didn't say it was sponsored and she really loves that cleanser. I bet it does everything that she says that it's gonna do. So I'm gonna spend my hard earned money on that Epiel cleanser because Sherry used it and she said that it was life changing the greatest cleanser she's ever used. But little do you know, I was paid to say all of those things. I just didn't tell you guys I was paid to say them. I just let you believe that everything that came out of my mouth was my true feelings, even though FBL paid me to say all of those bullet points. Make sure you say it takes off all of your makeup. Make sure that you say that it's moisturizing. But you guys didn't know that because I never disclosed that what you were seeing is an ad, that I was actually paid to say those things. Now, that's not to say don't get me wrong, I fully 100% believe that you can take a sponsorship with a company and get paid by that company and still be able to give your honest opinion. It all depends on the relationship that that content creator has established with that brand. I think I tell you guys all the time, like I do get emails, hey, will you try this? Hey, will you do a video? I get those videos and I do test the things. Even though that is not a paid sponsorship, that company is still gifting me the item. I did not have to pay for that item with my own hard earned money, but I make sure that I let that company know yeah, you can send me whatever you want all day or day. I will test it, but I'm going to tell you what right now, I'm going to be very 100% transparent about it. I will test it as directed. Either it works or it doesn't work. And I'm going to say as much. And believe me, I have had companies come back and be like, okay, well, we'll send you the product, but can you make sure you do X, Y, and Z? Like, I want to say it was the spin brush people. They sent me an email after I said, yeah, I, you know, I've already tested the spin brush, but if you want to send me yours, fine, I'll test it too. They sent me an email like detailing out how they wanted me to do my video. You must test every attachment. You must do X, Y, and Z. And I am immediately wrote them back and said, no, I'm going to conduct the video how I conduct all of my videos. And if you are in fact familiar with my channel, like you stated you were, you will know exactly how I conduct my test videos. And again, either your product does what it says it's going to do or it doesn't. 
do what you say it's gonna do. And I'm not gonna try to hide it. Even though I'm not getting paid by the company, they are sending me that product and they're hoping I'm gonna give it a rave review. But right from go, I let them know the review's gonna be what the review's gonna be. So you might wanna send me something that you know is actually going to work because if not, I'm going to say so. So while I do believe that you can watch sponsored content from a creator and still be able to get an honest review from that creator, I think that that sort of content, especially from what I've seen over on TikTok, again, don't have TikTok, but what I have seen in my little compilation videos on YouTube, it's the Wild West. And also, why are we looking to TikTok? for reviews on skincare products when TikToks are very limited in the time limit for the content. That's another thing. Why are we trying to go to TikTok for actual reviews when we know that TikTok, what is it? I don't even know. That's because I'm not on TikTok. Is it three minutes? Is it five minutes? They're very short little snippets of content. How can I tell you this moisturizer in the time limit that TikTok gives me, how can I really review a moisturizer that I'm just opening for the very first time and tell you guys, oh yeah, oh, oh, I have got 30 more seconds. Yep, 30 more seconds to tell you guys, yeah, this moisturizer, it's on point. You guys should get it. I love it. I mean, I only just right now put it on and it's only been, you know, a minute and a half. But yeah, from right now what I can tell, Totally, you should get it. Don't worry, the link to it's in my description box below. How is that even possible? Well, I'll tell you, it's not possible. You know, I feel like there are a lot of young people over on TikTok. And it's not, I'm not saying that young people don't know what they're talking about, but also too, I think young people are very impressionable and I think that they tend to believe their favorite content creators. I don't think that they have had enough life experiences to like weed out the bullshit. Like they just see their favorite content creator and they're like, yes, love her, she's the queen and I'm buying everything she tells me to buy. They can't see through the bullshit. And to me, it's a little bit sad that these content creators, and, and guess what? The content creators themselves are very young. You know, I've complained about that a million times. It's like we shoot these younger kids to start them. We're just handing money, hand over fist to them because they've shot to popularity on this social media app. I mean, we can't give them enough money and we'll pay them to say anything. And the people watching are just eating it up. They're just eating it up and making these content creators even more popular, therefore giving them more money, therefore making them more problematic. Creators might go into it with all of the best intentions. Like, yes, I'm gonna be a very positive person on this social media app. I wanna spread my positivity. I wanna share my knowledge, all of those things. I believe that. I fully believe that everybody goes in, I'm not everybody. I fully believe that most content creators go into it thinking that, but it doesn't take much to make a content creator turn just throw some dollars at them and before you know it, all of that positivity and sharing the knowledge goes right out the window because they got some money. Yeah. And I know that you guys know that that's how I already feel about it. And I also know that you guys kind of feel the same way about it. I think that's why. I mean, I kind of know that's why. We've all come to this corner of the YouTubes to share our opinions and our ideas and our perspectives on things in the comments below of this channel. And I love that. I love that. It's like, I don't know what to do. I, I, I single-handedly can't change the mindsets of the generations that are on TikTok. And I know I can't, 
but I just feel like, I don't know, maybe all of us can come together with a solution. Not that it needs to be solved, but how do we, I don't know if it's make people understand or the younger generation, like, hey guys, if you're really looking for someone to give you an honest, full out review, maybe TikTok's not exactly where it's at. And when I stumbled across this video, now mind you, I watched a couple of videos, but this one video in particular showed a clip from TikTok that really, really got me thinking. So we all know there's like a handful of beauty TikTokers. One in particular is constantly getting called out for not disclosing sponsorships, not disclosing ads, for uh, maybe not being that honest when they're reviewing like, um, I don't know, mascara. This person gets called out a lot. And surprisingly, this person is still super duper, duper popular over on TikTok. Still getting sponsorship after sponsorships, getting sent on brand trips to like Dubai and everything. And you know what? It makes you think, I know it's like, Sherry, get into the video that you saw, what that brought you to this whole conversation. But here's the thing. It's kind of hard to not get down about what you're doing in your life to try to be a good person and to try to just, you know, live day to day. And this whole TikTok and people that are popular and people that continue to be rewarded for just shitty behavior just blows my mind. It reminds me of, I used to work for this lady. Uh, she owned a bridal dress business. She was the shadiest business person I have ever worked for in my life. So shady. Like I don't even wanna get into all the shade that I witnessed happening. The main example is the business wasn't doing very well. And so she decided to file bankruptcy. And so the bank was going to come in and take her inventory to pay off some of her debts. But prior to that happening, she had all of us employees gather all of the samples, which you're not supposed to sell. And she would do sample sales to try to earn money. And then from whatever didn't sell, she actually like rented a storage unit and put the dresses in the storage unit so that they couldn't be taken by the bank. And guess what? Her business is still thriving today. And that was many, 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 many years ago that I worked for her and her business is still thriving today. And it just makes you think like, okay, wait, okay. So I've been living my life like correctly. I've been trying to do all the good things possible. Mind my own business. I'm not problematic. I pay my bills. I pay my taxes. I work really, really, really fucking hard. And then I look over here and I see the shadiness that's happening and how successful that shady person is. And then I look at myself and think, I can barely afford to pay gas. Do I need to become shady in order to succeed? I don't want to become shady in order to succeed. But if I take a look around, it's like all the shady people are succeeding. All the shady people are being rewarded. All the shady people are getting sponsorships and brand trips. And while us, just good, law-abiding, honest citizens are like, well, I guess I'll make some top ramen and then walk to work. Okay, that's cool. I'm just singing. I don't know how all of a sudden this turned into a rant, but it's kind of going down the rant rabbit hole. Cause it's like every time I turn around, we, we as a society, the collective we continue to build up these problematic people. Just hand them bucket loads of money, knowing that they're dishonest, that they're problematic, that they're just taking advantage of this whole situation and they're being consistently shady. But yet we're like, yes, please, here's more money. Tell me some more fucking lies. Yeah, so that, you know, the paycheck that I had to work like 50 hours this week to receive, I can go waste my money on the bullshit that you're telling me. 
because I'm looking to you for honest reviews because I don't have a lot of money to just go out and try to buy everything and test them myself. So I'm coming to you, influencer, content creator, so that you can tell me what I should actually spend my money on that I've worked so hard to get and I barely have any of it. So I have to be very frugal with the way I spend it and I can't buy 17 skincare cleansers. I can only just buy one. But yesterday you told me that it was Epiel. And today you're telling me that it's whatever. And then tomorrow I look and you're telling me it's this whole new thing. What is it? And then we have the nerve to get mad at the influencer for being shady and problematic. When we handed it to them, I've said, if I said it once, I've said it a million times. If we just stopped watching them, they would no longer exist. If we just stopped watching them. Bye-bye sponsorships, bye-bye brand trips, bye-bye ads, because if no one's watching their content, those brands will no longer be shoveling money their way. I don't get our mentality sometimes. I don't get it. Anyways, back to the video that I stumbled across from Skeleton. He is actually a, I would say beauty content creator on YouTube. He was talking about this TikToker who has been getting called out for doing too many skincare ads, which they're not disclosing as an ad. So one day they're coming on to TikTok and they're saying, full get ready with me with Epiel, the cleanser, the moisturizer, the under eye cream, whatever the shit. They're like, this is amazing. And then it's like a week later, they're doing another get ready with me with Skin C. And they're using the cleanser, the moisturizer. And they're like, I love this. Like I turned my boyfriend onto this. I turned my mom onto this, made my pores smaller. I have no more acne. And you're, wait, you're thinking to yourself, wait a minute. Last week, she was telling me it was fucking Epiel. How did she have enough time to test? I mean, it's only been a week. How did she go through? Uh, how would, wait, I'm, I'm so confused. And then another week goes by. Today, we're doing a full get ready with me. We're gonna skin prep with Aveeno. Oh my gosh, you guys. I just washed my face with Aveeno and yada, yada, yada. And now you're thinking, okay, wait, it's been three weeks. She's shown me three different skincare brands, but yet has claimed each and every one of those skincare brands are the best. They cleared up her acne and her boyfriend's acne. Her mom no longer has wrinkles. And it's like, wait a minute, how can she like all three in such a short period of time? How has she had the time to test all of these skin? How has her boyfriend and her mom and her aunt had any time to test any of these. I'm so confused right now. This is all allegedly, but we can we can see it on the TikToks. Um, people are saying that if this person is disclosing that it's an ad, it's very hidden. It doesn't jump right out at you that this is an ad. She actually doesn't verbalize that this is an ad. Allegedly, it's all it's all allegedly. I'm not pointing the finger at anyone. I'm just giving you my opinion on what I have seen, and this is what I have seen. All of these minimal skincare tests fed to us as these are the best skincare products ever. And I should know because I'm super popular over on TikTok. So listen to what I say. Even though three weeks ago I was telling you it was Epiel and then a week after that I was telling you it was Skincy and now today I'm telling you it's Aveeno. Just trust me because everything that I say is great. And I hope three weeks ago you use my links below to buy Epiel. And I hope the week after that you use my links below to buy Skincy. And I hope this week you're using my links below to buy Aveeno. I mean, just trust me. So when I was watching Skeleton's video, you know, he's going through all the stuff I had already seen on different channels about this content creator and how often they are pushing these skincare ads on TikTok saying how great they are. And I was like, yeah, 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 I've heard all about it. I was neither here nor there about it because, you know, sometimes it's like, you know, I could give two shits. I'm not over on TikTok. If the people over on TikTok are following this handful of people and they're taking their word on everything after seeing, you know, a three minute TikTok ad on how great something is and they're spending their money on it and then they get the thing and they're disappointed. Well, you know what? 
That was your own fucking fault. I don't give a shit. That's on you, man. So there's a lot of times where I don't care. Let whatever's happening over on TikTok happen. It's the people that are watching that are giving this person the power. They're not learning their lesson. Clearly, they keep going back to her for more content. And then the same shit happens. It's like, that's on you. But when I got to this one section, I thought, yeah, I don't know, guys. He plays this TikTok of this lady. And she's a lady. She's not a kid. And she is on the TikToks complaining about this content creator that everybody's talking about. And why is anyone taking skincare advice from Michaela? In March alone, just in the past month, she has promoted and claimed to use four different skincare brands. She is wondering why anybody in their right mind would take skincare advice from this content creator, knowing that in March alone, this content creator has promoted four different skincare brands. The carotene went viral for a reason. It's just that good. I've never been more consistent with a skincare product in my life. Completely transformed, not just me, but also my husband's. I'm gonna use the Rock Barrier Renew Gel to Foam Cleanser. I think I blacked out on Amazon. Blemish, I'm just gonna clean and dry the skin. It's nearly gone. And in all of them, she is raving about how amazing these skincare products are. And I actually started to feel bad for the lady that made the TikTok. You know, maybe this doesn't bother anyone else. It doesn't seem to bother her fans. So maybe it shouldn't bother me, but it bothers me and here's why. I don't think it's even scientifically possible using a product for that short of a period to even have enough data to make any claims about it at all or about the consistency of the results. I mean, certainly not enough to recommend it to other people. It certainly doesn't seem to bother her fans. So the lady is wondering why it should bother her. Kind of like the attitude I take. Well, if no one else is giving a shit, why should I give a shit? Then she goes on to say, well, I do give a shit. First of all, I don't even think it's scientifically possible to gather enough data to make a claim that a skincare product works in such a short amount of time. This is the issue with the TikTok generation. I mean, I don't know what the demographics are over there. Again, full disclosure, I'm not on TikTok. There's gotta be some sort of demographics. YouTube has demographics. I know all of you guys, what age range you fall into. I know that most of you that come to this channel are women. I know all about it. And so I am wondering why more mature people are turning to TikTok for things like skincare reviews. I'm wondering why why people of our generation are looking to TikTok and looking to these younger content creators for their honest reviews on skincare. Why? Why are we doing that? I mean, just in our little small bubble that we have over here on This Is Real Life, I can't tell you how many times I've opened up a comment from a new subscriber or a new viewer that has said something along the lines of, finally, I found someone who is of a certain age, who is actually testing products for as long as it's recommended in order to make a knowledgeable review on that product, who is not what I will call a tween. We all know what I say when tween. A anybody that's younger than me is a tween. If you have smooth skin, you're a tween in my opinion. <laughs> Finally, somebody who has a face that has lived a life is testing products for the amount of time that that product says it should be used before seeing the results that they claim. While her videos might be very lengthy, she doesn't miss a mark. She's using it every single day for however many days, be it two weeks, be it a month, be it three months. She's letting us know with little check-ins and updates how the product is going for her, if she's seeing anything thus far. She's taking before and after pictures. I get those comments and then I see content like this over on TikTok and I, feel bad for this lady and maybe she's not watching this particular person for skincare reviews but I feel like she is and I feel like there's a lot of people out there turning to these very short TikTok reviews in order to help them make their decisions on their purchases for skincare and it's like wait a minute 
Am I the best kept secret on YouTube? Because I might be the best kept secret, not only on YouTube, but in all the land of social medias. And then it makes me wonder like, wait, okay, so I know I exist and I know I'm not the only one. I know that I am not like the only first ever and only YouTuber that actually tests products for a specific amount of time and gives an honest review. I know this not only me, but what's going on in our brains where we clearly have thorough YouTube reviews on products that we're considering purchasing versus not so thorough paid for sponsorships and ads over on TikTok. It's like, why are, why are we wasting our time over here? I don't get it. Why are we wasting our time and our money? Why, when there's this? I just don't get it. Do you guys get it? Cause I don't get it. So I guess with all of that said and that big rant, what I am looking to you guys for in a wonderful discussion in the comments below is, do you guys watch TikTok? Am I like a, you know, those old people, they just don't get the TikToks over there. Am I that? Cause I don't think I'm that. I think I'm a smarter consumer and I just know that I'm not gonna get very valuable reviews on products, be it skincare, woodworking tools, paint, what have you. I just don't think, well, no, I know. I know TikTok's not where I'm gonna go to get those reviews. I'm gonna find some people over on the YouTube that make me some longer content, even though I might fast forward through some of it, but at least I can see them using said product for a certain amount of time. I can see them and what they actually think. Is that product causing them an issue? Did they have any problems with it? Did it do what it said it was gonna do? So I'm wondering, like, am I the only one? How many of you guys are on TikTok? And how many of you have actually taken what some of these TikTok content creators have said as true fact and gone out and purchased that product based on the review that was given on TikTok? And if you have, have you been happy with that purchase? Did that TikToker give you an honest review? Or did you get the product and be like, oh, this is a piece of shit. This doesn't work at all. I'm curious to know how many of you are TikTok watchers and are TikTok purchasers. Let me know in the comments below. Again, I'm not saying it's just me. I'm not, I'm not the best and only YouTube creator that reviews skincare and is honest. I know that. I know there are tons of other, you guys have actually recommended me other channels in the comments that I should go check out. And I am very thankful for that. I'm always trying to broaden my knowledge as far as like makeup application on mature skin. I'm not going over to TikTok for that. I'm going to be researching people that look similar to me and can give me helpful tips on makeup application for my skin. It's like, how do we let her know that there's this whole world over here on YouTube that will allow her to make educated decisions when it comes to her purchasing skincare. Or is there anything that we can do? Or do we just ignore it and be like, you know what, like I, like I say, that's on them. They wanna believe those people, that's on them. But then it's also like the owner of the dress shop. Why should this not so honest person be like super successful when they're just spewing whatever out into the world. Why should we be letting that happen? I don't know if there's anything we can do about that, but I'm curious to know what you guys think. How do you feel about the whole TikTok situation? I don't really think it's doing good for anybody, to be quite honest. Yeah, it might be fun and it's quick and kind of do some mindless scrolling and relax. Like I get all that, but at what point does it just become like harmful content? So yeah, that's it. Just a little rant about TikTok. And you know, it could be also like a double rant about like, you know, maybe I'm jealous. Maybe it's that simple. Maybe I'm just jealous. Because like I said, with my bridal shop owner person, here I am over here trying to do everything right and honest and be true to the people that watch this channel. Because believe me, I know Time is a luxury and to have you guys spending your time watching this channel means a ton to me. But on the flip side of that, I'm like, well, you know what? Seems like there's an older generation over on TikTok. 
What if I just like took it easy, made a couple three minute TikToks every now and again, and maybe would some sponsorships roll in? Maybe should I just leave my morals at the door and just be like, yeah, FBL, what what do you want? You, what, you want to pay me to say, I've never used this before, but sure, yeah, send me over that money. I'll say whatever you want me to say. I only have to say it for like three minutes, so it's a big damn deal. Like I said, leave my morals at the door and just become shady in order to be successful. Because I've been, I've been having morals for... 52 years of my life and look where I am. So yeah, maybe this rant has a lot to do with my own like internal jealousy. I don't know. But I like to think that it has more to do with the fact that I do have morals and I just wish everybody else did. I just don't understand how you can live with yourself when you're doing a review on something that you haven't tried long enough or you were just given bullet points to say and you know that that your millions of subscribers are clicking that link and are, are spending their hard earned money on that product that you said was great when in your mind you don't really even know if it's great because you just put it on three minutes ago i just don't know how people can do it i never understood it with my bridal dress shop boss lady and i don't understand it with these tiktok people you guys i just don't I guess just what are your thoughts in general? Also too, if you guys have stumbled across any like more mature skincare applications, cause <laughs> totally off topic, I do want to follow a tutorial. You guys um, seemed to appreciate when I followed the, I'm doing my eye makeup wrong, Robert Welsh video. I do kind of want to follow a, like a full face of makeup because on the last get ready with me, some of you guys were talking about my eyebrows. <laughs> And I know, I have like very sparse eyebrows. I do nothing with them. Simple fact, the matter is I don't know how, I don't know how to do them. So if you guys have come across any mature makeup application videos that you think I should check out and maybe even some tutorials that you would like me to try on the channel, leave them in the comments below because I need help with that. I just need help with that guys. So yeah, I'm asking for a lot. There's a lot of stuff that I want you to leave in the comments below. I want you to like talk amongst yourselves. Maybe we can just all come to a conclusion on not what can we do about TikTok, but how do we like share with others how to avoid those sorts of reviews on TikTok, how to stop wasting your money on shit that's reviewed over on TikTok. I don't know. Yeah, there you have it and there it is. TikTok, what, what are we gonna do about it? So if you like this video, please be sure to give it a big thumbs up. I know this wasn't my normal skincare, but like I said, I'm in the middle of testing some stuff and I didn't want to like taint the test with doing something else right now. And I saw that video and I just wanted to get it off my chest. So that's your skincare Saturday video for today. So yeah, if you liked it, please give this video a big thumbs up. Also, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please subscribe to the channel. Be sure to share this video with your family and friends. And as always, thanks for hanging out.